You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's largest mortgage lender. Spring will be here soon, so if buying a new home is on your to-do list, right now is the time to call Quicken Loans. Learn about which mortgage options make sense for you and get a jump on your competition. With our exclusive Rate Shield approval, the low rate you lock today is protected for up to 90 days while you shop for your new home. With a Rate Shield approval, if rates go up, your low rate stays locked. But if rates go down, you get that new, even lower rate. Either way, you win. Talk to us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com to take advantage. Here's another great reason to work with us. For a record nine years in a row, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. Again, to lock in today's low mortgage interest rate and get the security of our exclusive rate shield approval, call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. For J.D. Power award information, visit jdpower.com. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Hi, welcome to this Subway ad for the new Sesame Ginger Glaze Chicken Signature Wrap. How would you like it? I'll take a... Sports announcer at home? Yeah, how do you... We just know. My wife picks up the new signature wrap. It's got double the rotisserie style chicken mixed with a sesame ginger glaze. She appears annoyed at me, but she shrugs it off. Those sweet and savory flavors are calling her name. She lifts the wrap and she takes the bite. Incredible. And now she's closing the door on my subway. Make it what you want. Limited time only at participating restaurants. Double meat based on average six inch sub. I'm little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle and here is my spell. No, that like this. When I get all steamed up, then I shout, tip me over and pour me out. (laughs) This is WWE superstar Roman Reigns. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Who is your daddy and what does he do? I'm Alan Ray and I do this for free. Oh, a microphone and a phony at the bike. Quiet, numbskulls, I'm broadcasting. Politics, 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 politics. No, God! No, God, please, no! No, no, no! Oh, it's gonna be fun. We can stay up late, swapping manly stories in the morning. I'll be the wild. Frigatra Sky Decaphobia. That is the fear of Friday the 13th. Happy Friday the 13th. It is the refreshingly non political podcast about everything else. I'm Alan Ray, and guess what? I do this for free. Yes, Frigatra Sky Decaphobia is the fear of Friday the 13th, and I am coming at you on Friday the 13th in my Gadsden studios where it's a um, partially sunny, kind of cold, Typical December day, and we're only 12 days away from Christmas. And so, you know, in the spirit of everything, I won't, on this show at least, I will not talk to you again until after Christmas. So, you know, I have to do a Christmas special today. I'm kind of obligated to do it. But first, you know, somebody pointed out this morning, first thing, that it's Friday the 13th. And I went, oh, yeah. For a lot of people, the fear of Friday the 13th is very real. So when we get started on this, we're going to study that just a little bit. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back.
So experts say that frigates or skydecophobia affects millions of people. And they estimate that businesses, especially airlines, suffer from severe losses on Friday the 13th. Now, there is a fear of the number 13, which I do believe is called uh, triskaidecophobia. Uh, triskaidecophobia. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> way, way too many syllables. I cannot deal with this. Not even. Anyways, that's the fear of the number 13. Nobody really knows where, I mean, there's a lot of things out there about Friday the 13th and where the fear of it came from. Um, one of the theories that I thought was pretty interesting reading is that um, this is the day in history, theoretically, that um, the Knights of, of Templar were doomed to meet their destruction. Uh, and, and it's kind of an interesting thing, you know, that that uh, this is it. But, you know, the Friday the 13th has a lot of implications. To me, to me personally, Friday the 13th is a very endearing day. It's a special day. Uh, my wife and I went out on our first, quote, date, which basically she called me up and says, hey, I got bowling league tonight. Want to come hang out? And I said, sure. And we've been hanging out ever since. Uh, <laughs> and it was on a Friday the 13th. Friday, February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. And as I said, we've kind of been hanging out ever since. Uh, we, we've we established a pretty good life. And, well, I guess neither one of us have found anybody else we'd rather just hang out with. So Friday the 13th for me is not a bad day. However, uh, businesses, airlines, they, they all suffer because people do not want to uh, fly on Friday the 13th. They don't want to go anywhere on Friday the 13th. And it's kind of funny because the whole calendar event of Friday the 13th uh, is pretty peculiar. And a, a lot of this information is coming from uh, timeanddate.com. I didn't know there was a timeanddate.com. See, you learn something new. You listen to my show, you listen to I Do This For Free, and you will learn something, anything. It might be completely stupid, but it's something you can bring up at a party and say, you know, I learned this from some mental nut job uh, on, on uh, klrn.com where liberty and reason still reign. Some of you have written in suggesting that I'm a whack job. That's right. Uh, anyways, um, if you look at the calendar, there is a uh, calendrical method to the madness of Friday the 13th. Whenever a common year, now I didn't know this, whenever a common year begins on Thursday, the month of February, March, and November will have a Friday the 13th. This will happen 11 times in the 21st century. Uh, the February, March, November pattern repeats in a 28-year cycle. In the 21st century, the cycle began in 2009. In 2015, six years later, Friday the 13th occurred February, March, and November. This won't happen uh, for 11 more years until 2026, and we will have to wait again for 11 years until 2037 to see the February, March, November trilogy. This pattern will repeat itself starting 2043, six years after 2037. How about that? Now, even during leap years, uh, three Friday the 13th can occur in a leap year as well. If January 1st of a leap year falls on a Sunday, the months of January, April, and July will each have a Friday the 13th. So these are, are kind of all, you know, kind of ominous doom and gloom type type things on Friday the 13th, bad years. Uh, fittingly, Alfred Hitchcock was born on Friday the 13th. Ooh, that's spooky. Um, so, yeah, there, there, there's a lot of mystique and mystery behind Friday the 13th. They're not really 100% sure uh, why this was all of a sudden deemed an unlucky day. A lot of the people I've spoken to uh, believe that it's it's actually because of the Knights Templar. And because they were doomed to be destroyed, uh, the king's edict came down on a Friday the 13th, thus beginning the, the, the beginning of the end for the Knights Templar. And if you've ever studied the Knights Templar, I've dabbled in it just a smidge. I am no expert at anything by any means, but there's people out there that study this quite a bit. And uh, that's a fascinating, fascinating study right there is the Knights Templar, if you ever get into it. There's rumors, there's rumors, and there's always been this little shady side story that they still exist. And some people even believe that they eventually became the Illuminati. Ooh, spooky. Anyway, so there you go. 
Friday the 13th. Happy Friday the 13th to you. Um, I am Alan Ray. I do this for free. You know, this is this is quickly becoming one of my favorite things to do. The world, especially lately, is just being drowned in politics. And here I am over here, and there's other people on KLRN.com, KLRNradio.com, excuse me, uh, who, who have also gone the way of, hey, let's do shows that have nothing to do with politics, and let's just have some fun. You got to kick away and take a break once in a while, people. It's almost Christmas. It's that magical time of the year. So you know what? In honor of Christmas, I've decided to throw together some things. And uh, <laughs> it didn't turn out exactly like I wanted to. But anyways, uh, we are going to get into that in a little bit. But first, first and foremost, <clears throat> in true form, I have to talk about space just a little bit. You know, I talk about SpaceX quite a bit. But uh, Blue Origin comes into uh, quite a bit of news stories, too. They are out there competing against SpaceX. Now, if you don't know who Blue Origin is, Jeff Bezos, uh, that's his space company. And they have just scored another successful space flight. Now, uh, this is according to seattletimes.com. Blue Origin used the same rocket for the sixth time Wednesday in West Texas. The suborbital flight exposed the capsule and its contents including NASA experiments, artwork, and a commercial grapevine study to more than three minutes of weightlessness. Mm, I can see the grapevine study. There, believe it or not, there are um, wineries, very famous wineries, who are sending cultures to the space lab, or you know, the International Space Station. Oh, I almost said Skylab. Boy, does that tell you how old I am or what? Anyway, um, and and they're they're trying to invent new methods of making wine through space. Can you imagine space wine? That should be interesting. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyways, um, so I could see that. I couldn't see the artwork uh, or, you know, maybe there's some NASA experiments. Anyways, the capsule reached a peak altitude of 65 miles just above the official threshold for space. The New Shepard rocket landed vertically seven minutes after lift aisle, liftoff, followed by the capsule, which parachuted down to end the 10-minute flight. Uh, the Cornell said the company plans on another couple of space flights before putting people on board. The craft has been the biggest window ever built into a spacecraft. So this, this craft, from what I'm understanding, is actually going to be used as commercial flight to space. If you have enough money, you can get a seat on this thing and go to space. Uh, NASA had trash recycling and plant experiments on board. Space Cargo Unlimited, a Luxembourg startup that flew 12 bottles of red Bordeaux wine to the International Space Station last month for a year of aging, had vine calluses or cells from three types of French Cabernet grapes on board, each in its own Petri dish. So there you go. That, that's the uh, experiment I was telling you about. They're making space wine. If that doesn't excite you, I don't know what does. Uh, what else we got? Oh, yeah, the other thing about space. SpaceX is uh, working on, on fixing. Now, I, I had this a few, man, a couple of months ago. We were talking about the uh, Starlink satellite setup, which is supposedly going to bring uh, Internet across the world, and it's going to be high speed, it's going to be nice. But the problem they were having is this junking up the atmosphere. It's junking up space where it's ruining people's ability to, especially like, you know, universities and space studies and stuff. When they would uh, aim their telescopes out into space, they were catching these Starlink um, satellites going through their pictures and everything and ruining them. And so... Uh, one of the Starlink satellites in the next batch of 60 that SpaceX plans to launch in late December will be treated with a special coating designed to make the spacecraft less reflective and less likely to interfere with space observations. Uh, SpaceX President and Chief Operating Officer Gwen Shotwell said December 6th. Uh, this is from spacenews.com, of course. Uh, so they've already deployed 120 satellites. And uh, these things beam high-speed Internet, and, and then thousands of more they're planning on launching over the next few years. 
So what they're planning on doing is coating these things with this, this paint, with this coating, that's going to make them less uh, susceptible to being spotted by telescopes on Earth. So, you know, they're, they're at least listening. They're being concerned about it. It's going to be interesting. Now, I gave you this rundown on my last show about uh, software-defined radio. And one of the things I told you is you could actually get Internet from these SDRs, not even having to pay for them. There's a couple of them out there that it, it's, it's cheesy Internet. It doesn't give you a lot, but it's a beginning. And some of these SDRs, if you have like an old satellite dish and you have the, a few, uh, the right equipment, and it doesn't really cost that much, probably you could probably do the whole project under a couple hundred bucks. You know, find a satellite that somebody got hard cable instead of satellite and they want to get that ugly looking thing off their house. You say, hey, give me 10 bucks for that. Probably buy one in a garage sale. I don't know. And you fix up the right things to it. You can get a scaled down version of internet for absolutely no cost. Now, it would be fun to do. But anyways, uh, there's, there's new times coming. This is just the beginning. Pretty soon, uh, we're going to have high speed all over the world. We're all going to be connected. I don't know if that's a good thing. I don't know if that's a bad thing. It's just going to be the new normal. All right. Uh, wow. And here we are, 16 minutes into the show, and uh, we are going to start talking about Christmas. And I, I can't think of a better way to start Christmas. Now, now, I threw this out on social media the other day. Um, the first, uh, pretty much, what I did was I threw this question out here. And let me get to this real fast. Get under my profile. I pinned it. Okay. What I want to know is, what was the best and worst Christmas present you've ever received? And man, I could not believe the responses. So... We're going to do this thing. We're going to get into it right now, so let's get going. Yo, Merry Christmas. Yo, what's the word on the street? Yo, yo, Merry Christmas. Give me stuff. Give me stuff. A lot of stuff. Give me, give me stuff. Park, let's make a magical wish. It's December 20-something-ish, so put a lot of stuff under a tree. Okay. Here's a Christmas kiss from me. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, yeah. I'll battle wrap you under a mistletoe. Christmas time is nice. Let's celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ. Give me stuff. Give me stuff. A lot of stuff. Give me, give me, give me stuff. Let's hit the dope spot. I ribbity, 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 ribbity rap a lot. I'm the number one rapping dude. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, Rappy McRapperson, for Give Me Stuff for Christmas. I ran across this song <laughs> probably about, oh, man, it's been quite a few years now. My niece and I were driving around uh, Gladwin, Michigan, and it came on, and we turned it up and looked at each other. And that's, that's kind of been our special connection song, my, my, my lovely niece, who now has kids of her own and, and grown up. And every once in a while, we still talk about how hard we laugh when we heard that song. I asked, I did a little quick survey. What was the best and worst Christmas presents you've ever gotten? And I got some, uh, I got some, uh, some interesting answers. Uh, Aggie Reekin, who who does uh, a couple of shows on here, her and L. L. Meyer, they uh, they do a great show on here, uh, klrnradio.com. So the worst was the mini potato masher. It broke the first time I used it. The best was Grandma's last letter to me before she passed away. Oh, that's sweet. Um, Stacy, Scott's fire. Uh, she said the best one was too many to count. I have wonderful friends and family. That's kind of how I feel. Uh, worst weird stuff from my great grandma. As a kid, I was like, what the heck? As an adult, I find them very endearing. Uh, Sam Janney, worst, uh, ceramic goose alarm clock. Can you even believe that? A ceramic <laughs> goose alarm clock. I kind of want it. She could re-gift it to me. Uh, the best one, a cashmere soft ruby red teddy bear holding two plane tickets to Vegas. That would be all right. Uh, Teresa Jackson, uh, worst, was a bottle of shampoo. Who buys a bottle of shampoo for somebody for Christmas? Come on. Uh, the best, a blue topaz necklace that my dad had picked out for me before he passed that October. He had cancer, and that's, that's so special. 
Uh, where's a strawberry shortcake? This is from artist Angie. Artist Angie. In fact, if you were listening to klrnradio.com last night, uh, artist Angie and Paul took over uh, another bleeping podcast. Artist Angie was one of the first people that I remember hearing on a podcast. She has such an infectious laugh. Just, you can't help but just love her, you know? And, uh, so, I, I really, it was great to hear her voice again and just throwing that out there, giving them a head nod. Let's see. She says, worse, a strawberry shortcake bulletin board. She says, I was six and did not like her or need a bulletin board. Uh, the best one, trip to Universal Studios, Harry Potter with my family in Christmas 2017. Uh, Dolly Marlowe. You might know Dolly Marlowe. She is a pinup model. Um and she does all kinds of cool, like, 40s pinup stuff. She's really neat. Uh, worst, I've never received anything truly awful, and I'm always grateful to be thought of. But my Mr.'s grand did give me a lovely sweater and dungarees that were three X's. Okay. You know, Dolly, she's tiny. She could probably use all of that stuff as a sleeping bag. <laughs> uh, the best, I love sentinel gifts, a pair of earrings, uh, sentimental gifts, a pair of earrings last year, and we'll see what this year brings. That's cool. Uh, Jeff says, worst, can't remember, best Roman Empire themed chess set on a marble board with small tables and chairs. I would love that. Chess sets are cool. Uh, let's see. Worst, a house coat, best, a hammer. Yeah, guy, that's from Catherine Henshaw. But guys are a lot like that. I'd be easy to buy for. Buy me a flashlight, a tool, a hammer, something like that, or a gadget that I could sit there and fiddle around with Christmas Day. Really, quite honestly, I'm pretty easy. A lot of people think I'm hard to buy for. I'm fairly easy. You can buy me one of those uh, uh, Hickory Farms uh, snack assortments and a book. And I would be, and a cup of hot tea or hot coffee, gourmet stuff. I would be good all Christmas Day. I would just, I would just be in my happy place with a big smile on my face. Um, Kurt Michael says, "Worse, ugly socks that didn't even stay up." <laughs> uh, but his best one was being able to bring his youngling home from the hospital and have him off of chemo for Christmas. That is beautiful. Uh, Cyber Bulldog, we know her affectionately as Lou. An engagement ring. Both answers. So that was her best and worst. Uh, let's see. Bill McLaughlin said worst. A used Swan 250, a.k.a. Now, you probably don't get it. I do. A Swan 250, uh, which is a uh, shortwave ham radio receiver. Uh, it's, 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 they're kind of drifty. That's what they call the 250 too drifty. That's what they call them. His best one was a display board of his father's military service stuff. It goes on and on. Let's see. What else we got here? Uh, Odessia says, well, bath, well, worse is a bathrobe for my parents, which turned out to be a gift that someone else gave them and they didn't want. Really? You regifted your kid a bathrobe? Sigh. Uh, let's see. My request had been for a book that I needed for a class. The best on his was uh, the birth of his first child. Uh, R.W. Nutjob said, Worst, a pair of black pointed toe Italian loafers. My sweet aunt confused with bass Ouijans. Oh, man. <laughs> his best one was his first bicycle. That's cool. A red Columbia one speed that was too big for him. Yeah, but you know what? That's fine. Too big for you. You grow into it. Uh, of course, Ordy. Ordy the Amish says, Worst gift, a $5, $5 McDonald's gift card. Best gift, cast iron Dutch oven that I, I know I'll have forever. He probably still uses it to this day. Uh, Tom Foolery King says his worst was a vegetable shredder. See, he liked it, but it broke after the first use. His best one was a Mercedes CLK 350 Cabriolet. I, could you imagine getting a Mercedes 350 Cabriolet for Christmas? I can't. So those are some cool answers. I really enjoyed that. So you know what? I, I just browsed around, and I found a shocking, <laughs> shocking 10 worst Christmas gifts ever. Um, and let's see if we can get this pulled up here. Hopefully I can. Oh, it's not going to do it. But I, it, it's burned into my memory. One of them was uh, this this guy got, as a joke, his grandma received, his grandmother 
received a gift card to a lingerie shop. His grandma made him go in and buy the lingerie. <laughs> it backfired. It backfired. So, uh, and, and quite honestly, it made me laugh because the lady asked, you know, is this for your girlfriend? It's like, no, no, it's for my sister. No, actually, it's for my grandmother. And uh, <laughs> I can't even imagine that would be the most embarrassing thing on the planet. But, you know, I, I really can't think of too many bad uh, gifts that I've ever gotten for Christmas. Quite honestly, that it, it's, it, it's not really that. To me, Christmas is one of those deals. It's not about the gifts to me. It's more about just the, the time of, of year. And so um, let's see here. Is it going to come up? Yeah, it's going to work. Let's see. Here's some really, truly bad ones, okay? The number one was, it was a shirt that had, I'm not a gynecologist, but I'll take a look anyway. It was from this person's stepdad's mom, and she knew that he wanted to be a doctor, and her English was not good. She didn't really know what it was saying. He found it hilarious, and once we translated it to her, she almost cried from embarrassment. He wore it proudly for the rest of the day. <laughs> uh, number two, uh, somebody had left some video games. Goes, I le had left some video games in my mom's room. She found them and assumed my dad had bought them as Christmas gifts for me. So for Christmas, I got my own video games. Whoops. Uh, number three, oh, here, here it is, here it is, a gift, tar, a gift card to a lingerie store from my grandma. The messed up part was not the gift itself, but the fact that she made my poor 19-year-old brother go in and buy it. As he told it, the conversation went something like this. Cashier, shopping for your girlfriend? Brother, no, my sister, well, my grandma. Awkward silence. <laughs> so what it was was a gift card to a lingerie store from my grandma. Okay, so this girl got a gift card from her grandma. The messed up part wasn't the gift card itself, but the fact she made her poor 19-year-old brother go in and buy it. Can you imagine going to the store? Well, no, this gift card is for my grandma. Yeah, just lie, dude, okay? That's one of those times that just a lying is, a lie just is, is acceptable. Let's see, number four, one Christmas I got 18 pairs of socks. I was probably 12, and I tried really hard to look grateful and thank my parents, but with each pair I opened, I got progressively more upset. It didn't help that my brother was tearing through his toys and video games. I ended up excusing myself to go to the bathroom and started crying. My mom came to get me and asked what was wrong. She said to stop crying and come back to the living room. She then gave me my real gift, a new laptop. The reason I got socks was my mom just wanted me to have something to unwrap because my brother had a lot of cheaper stuff where I had one bigger thing. I felt incredibly spoiled and embarrassed. Definitely a happy ending. <laughs> so, you know, never never get too freaked out over stuff like that. Let's see. Uh, oh, here's one. My grandma gave me bright red undies with googly eyes on them and an extra piece of black cloth to put your... Um, genitals inside as the nose <laughs> the problem was she's a girl whoops <laughs> number six i got a book called coping with being adopted from santa while i was in high school it <laughs> was news to me <laughs> merry christmas son you're adopted ho 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 uh, let's see. A wooden pop-out playset from my aunt. Recommended age was two to four years old. I was 14. Hmm. Maybe your auntie doesn't think much of your intellect. Uh, number, <laughs> number eight. Uh, this wasn't my gift, but it was the most awkward situation ever. A few years ago, my grandmother had her legs amputated. Don't feel bad. Since then, her health has improved a ton. Anyways, last Christmas, my aunt bought her socks. It was so awful. <laughs> Talk about uh, a good reason to re-gift. Oh, thank you for the socks. I wish I had something to put them on. Oh, 
Number nine. <laughs> My uncle got me a giant block of cement once. He put random things throughout the block and gave me a miniature hammer and chisel. I actually chiseled through the whole thing and found some coins and what appeared to be an arrowhead. My uncle is the strange one in our family. It would be a pretty cool gift, actually, if there were cool enough things inside of it. Unfortunately, there was a brand new hammer and chisel in the middle. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy, I'm not, I'm not even going to go on this one. Three years ago, I got a shake weight Christmas morning. When I opened it, my dad laughed and yelled, it's for practice. Uh, he was on his way to college. Yeah, no. Uh, let's see. 11, when I was a kid, my grandma heavily favored me over my little sister. One year, she bought me a cool set of Pokemon, which was my absolute favorite thing at the time. She bought my sister a weasel ball, which is a toy meant for cats. <laughs> Grandma, let's, let's, let's try not to be so obvious of who your favorite is next time. All right? That would be great. Number 12. I had mentioned to my uncle one year that I wished I could grow a beard like his. Come Christmas time, my uncle hands me the present he got me. I unwrap it, and what do you know? It's his beard in a Ziploc bag. Gross. Gross. That's gross. Oh, my gosh. Number 13, every year my family does Secret Santa on Christmas. When I was about 10, my aunt had to buy me a gift. So Christmas morning, I opened my gift, and I find Christmas sweater along with a pair of my aunt's... Um, stained underwear apparently she was doing laundry and wrapping gifts at the same time and got the two mixed up <laughs> whoops <laughs> number 14 my sister got a bag of kroger shredded cheese from my aunt one year oh that's a lovely christmas gift i, I wouldn't mind that i would make nachos yeah number 15 grandma got me uh Boy, a douche in a hospital gown that would make a nice dress if someone sewed it all up for me. That was weird. Uh, <laughs> wow. In the late 70s, all the cool kids wore Ocean Pacific brand clothing. I remember those. I remember those. Uh, I did not wear OP stuff because we didn't have that kind of money. Uh, I think I got some second-hand OP t-shirts once in a while. We were kind of poor, so my mom and grandma made most of our clothes. My grandma made me pants and hand-stitched the letters O and P on the pockets. Looked nothing like the real thing. I had to wear them. Die of embarrassment. Yes. Um, my cousin had died in a drunk driving accident. This is a sad one, actually. In a few months before, so my mom got me a breathalyzer keychain. It wouldn't have been so bad, but the card it came with said from my cousin. Think, people. Think. Think. That's kind of in poor taste. <laughs> That's depressing, too. I once got a used copy of Snakes on a Plane soundtrack. Upon later investigation, the disc was cracked. The next year, I received a copy of the movie. I have never expressed any interest in Snakes on a Plane. That's, that's how bad trends start, people. Um, I'm not going to read this one. It's rated R. Let's see. I was dating this girl. She knew I was self-conscious about my teeth. I have fluorosis, so I wouldn't smile very much. When I did, I tried really hard to hide my teeth. Well, this girl's family bought me a toothbrush. It even had my name on it. That is the worst thing ever. So there you have it. Absolute worst Christmas presents you could actually buy or receive. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and we blew through the bottom of the hour like it was absolutely nothing. So I'm going to take a bit of a short break when we come back. Well, we'll carry on the Christmas tradition. So here we go.
My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Welcome back. I am Alan Ray. This is the refreshingly non-political podcast about everything else. And I do this for free on klrnradio.com where liberty and reason still reign. So glad you're spending this hour with me. You know, it's going to be a busy uh, next couple of weeks. Getting some shopping around. I just found out that my mother is moving again. She has this thing about moving in December, I guess. Uh, We're going to move her. She doesn't really have a lot, so that's like a one-day thing. Not a big deal. Uh, tomorrow night, Saturday night, I will be playing at a uh, private party with my guitar player, Rick. We'll have fun. You know, we, we do quite a bit of stuff. We, we actually, this time of year, we throw down a couple of Christmas tunes uh, in our own special way. Speaking of special Christmas tunes, you know, I, I just want to set the mood for this next this next segment of my show. Because it's it's such an important part of Christmas. And being an important part of Christmas, I I just have to have an important song to go with it. So without further ado, I give to you Chewbacca. (laughs) 
Santa job to clear it up. Hey, it's almost Christmas time, and I wanted to throw some uh, that, that some average and you know I'm kind of a of, of a statistics junkie here. I like to read stuff like this. Do you know that holiday retail sales in 2018 passed one trillion dollars? Wow, that's a lot. Anyways, um, I was looking at what, fortunately.com. Christmas is one of the biggest and most significant holidays in the USA. This time of year when people get together, enjoy some good old family time, and of course, spend copious amounts of money. Last year, holiday retail sales surpassed the trillion dollar mark. Yes, 12 zeros. With U.S. households spending an average of $1,500 during the season. To gain a better understanding of how much Americans spend and why, uh, for, fortunately here has compiled a list of 20 important Christmas spending statistics. Let's run down through them real quick. Number one, 27.1 million real Christmas trees were sold in 2017. Well, that put a dent in the forestry. Uh, no wonder the oxygen is so thin. Now, there's actually farms out there that grow these things pretty good. Uh, not only do uh, nothing beats the real thing, not only do they look better, they also are fully biodegradable. Oh, and they make a great campfire. Shh, you didn't hear that from me. Number two, nearly half of Americans don't buy Christmas decorations. What? A 2017 survey based on responses from 1,025 U.S. citizens revealed that 49% of them don't want to spend any money on Christmas decorations. Uh, in these Christmas decorations statistics, 14% said that they'd be happy just to receive decorations as holiday gifts. So, yeah, a lot of people rely on holiday gift decorations to decorate their Christmas tree. Let's see. 46% of people have lied about liking a gift. <laughs> Thus, what we talked about before the break. Gee, Grandma, that's a lovely sweater with a pair of your panties uh, attached to the back. Let's see, uh, 47.4% of women want to get jewelry for Christmas. It's a given. Sparkly blingies, buy them, men. Let's see, 32.3% of men want gift vouchers for Christmas. You know, that works. For men, Christmas shopping seems to be a lot simpler. Nearly a third of men want a gift voucher, a gift card, but only around 20.3% of them actually get them. Another 32% want clothing, but nearly half receive it, suggesting that around 13.5% aren't too thrilled with their hand-knitted socks from Grandma. Of course, even socks are better than nothing. Nearly a quarter of men probably feel unloved after getting no presents whatsoever for Christmas. Oh, that's sad. Now, like I said, get me a, uh, give me a gift card to, uh, to a tool place or to maybe, you know, the local uh, Cabela's or something like that. I'd be happy. I'll say you just just place it on top of the uh, snack, you know, tray from from Hickory Farms, and buy me a book. See, three things I'd be happy. I'd be good all day. I don't require. I'm low maintenance when it comes to Christmas. Uh, number six, sixty percent of people in the USA prefer to buy their holiday gifts online. I am one of them. Oh yes. You know what? Black Friday shopping one time in my life, and I vowed, I vowed that I would never do it again. I, I, I do like to go out one day. And if all goes right, that one day is going to be this coming Sunday. I think I have an actual free day with nothing going on. I'm going to step out into the madness. That is the Christmas holiday. But I already have quite a few gifts that I ordered online. Number one, I, the older I get, the less of a people person that I get. Um, and there's the the choice of where to go to buy Christmas presents is becoming less and less, especially around the area where I live. 
We used to have a mall. The mall is pretty much decimated. Uh, there's some cool downtown stuff, but I struggle with gifts. I, I am a, I'm a, is there a phobia about buying gifts? There's got to be a technical term for the phobia of buying gifts because I have it. I, I, I just, I struggle. And, I, and I'm open about it, too. It's like, oh, man, here we go. I, I, I always worry, are they going to like it? Is it cheesy? Is it stupid? You know, are they going to look at it and go, oh, boy, he's so bad at this. I, I struggle with it. So being online, I could sit with my hot cup of coffee in the morning, and I could scroll through things and go, oh, there's something nice. Oh, there's something nice. So that's cool. Now, see, I, I, my daughter used to go out with me Christmas shopping, and I enjoyed that. Even if from the time she was very, very young, uh, I would take her out. And as she got older, even though Christmas would get more expensive, um, it would be cooler because I would say, well, what about this for your mom? What about this for your mom? And she would yes or no me. And, you know, and, and the older she got, the more she's like, Dad, don't be cheap. Spend money on her. And, and, and I miss her. She doesn't live at home anymore. She lives across state. And I miss that time that I used to spend with her doing that. We used to have fun. And we, we would probably spend more money going out to eat and doing things like that than actual Christmas shopping. But we had fun. Uh, but anyways, 60% of U.S. shoppers who choose to shop at brick-and-mortar stores do so because it allows them to interact with a product. Yes, there are some things that you really want to touch, feel, pick up, and go, oh, hey, look at that. Uh, although, although these online places are making it easier and easier to actually return stuff if you get them, hold them, and say, ew, I don't like it. Uh, number eight, 76% of U.S. consumers Use computers to buy their Christmas gifts online. Okay, well, whatever. Computers, cell phones, so yeah, you can. The thing about the cell phones now, you know, like an a, a online app, you can just buy it while you're, you know, going down the road or doing whatever. As long as you're not driving, I know, I understand. But you know, on break at work, you can Christmas shop, get a little thing in there. You got to love online shopping. And and I really do feel sorry for brick and mortar stores. I'm kind of a traditionalist. I like brick and mortar stores. Don't get me wrong. But this time of year, I I just I don't like interacting with, you know, just the normal people. Used to be, like I said, when the when the mall was in full bloom and everything like that, especially in my hometown, I kind of enjoyed going out shopping because it would be the one time in the year that I would run into everybody I knew. My kids hated it because we would run into everybody that I knew. And I know, I mean, I've been in that town 54 years. I know a lot of people. And it would just be like every 15 steps, I go, hey, how's it going? I'd have to sit and talk and everything like that. It took, it took days to get shopping done, but it was cool. Now everybody shops online. Nobody goes out. And quite honestly, the people who do go out seem a little bit cranky. So, yeah, I kind of like doing the, but I still like to go out once just to get into the whole Christmas thing and see the lights and all that stuff. It's kind of cool. Uh, 23% of Christmas shoppers in the U.S. rely on social media to help them make the right choice. I have gone as far as to just throw out there on social media, what do I buy? I'm at my wit's end. And I got some really good ideas in the past. Hopefully that'll happen again. Let's see, number 10. 66% of Americans say they do their research online, but buy gifts in brick and mortar shops. That might be a better way of doing it. Um, that that's to me that seems better. Get the ideas in your head and then go get them. Or if you find it cheaper, go out there and feel up the gifts you want to buy, see them, and then find them cheaper online and bring them in. And that to me that's kind of you know cheesy. That's kind of cheesy. Because, you know, if you, if you do that, you're kind of short stacking the uh, brick and mortar stores because it does pay to keep those people employed. So think about that. Uh, let's see. Number 11, high income households are more likely to shop online for gifts. And these holiday statistics from 2018, a high income household is defined as one that earns more than 100000 per year, while low income households earn less than 50000 Research shows that 59% of the high income households do their shopping online compared to around 46% of low income families. So it's not a big difference. Not a big difference. So everybody kind of shops online. Let's see, number 12, in 2018, U.S. households spent an average of $1,536 during the Christmas holidays. I don't think we spend that much. 
I have to check with my wife. I, I allow my wife to buy the bulk of the Christmas presents. In fact, I, I've even told her, look, the kids are all grown. And even the kids will, you know, they'll even say this to her face too, that now they would rather have a couple of just cool presents and gift cards. Yeah, Every one of them just love a Visa gift card. You go out and buy something, splurge a little bit, have fun with it. $1,536 during the Christmas. That's a lot of money. Am I getting old and cheap? Please tell me I'm not getting old and cheap. That just seems like a whole lot of money. The average household spends 500 this is a subset of that, spends 525 bucks on gift cards. Uh, this is the highest amount it's been in 10 years. But the remaining $1,011 goes towards costs, okay, like entertaining, going out, buying outfits to wear. So this is everything on Christmas, $1,500 on everything. Christmas parties, things you wear to Christmas parties, and the whole shot, meals and everything. That that aligns it a little bit better. I thought that was just gifts. And as we said before, number 13, holiday retail sales in 2018 surpassed a trillion dollars. That's a lot of money, and it shows that we do have some disposable income that we're not afraid to whip out. Either that or they're going in debt. Uh, number 14, Americans spend an average of $123 on their spouses for Christmas. That's it? That's it? No. I, 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 we do more than that. Um, however, this amount is not equal for men and women. In fact, stats show that men spend around $20 more on their partners than women do. When it comes to high-end generosity, 12.5% of Americans spend more than $300 on spouses during Christmas. Uh, on a slightly more depressing note, Christmas spending stats show that around a quarter of Americans spend nothing on their adult children while 35.3% don't buy anything for their friends. Huh. You know, I, 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 I'm not a big shopper for friends. I'm not a big shopper. I hate shopping, to tell you the truth. I'm, I'm not even going to act like I don't. But even with friends, I try to, uh, uh, gift-wise, I'll try to buy a treat tray or something like that, you know, snack tray or anything. That's kind of cool to do. Yeah, You don't really have to buy people stuff. Make them something. I... I yeah, twenty-two percent of America. This is number fifteen. Twenty-two percent of Americans believe their Christmas spending will leave them in debt. Yeah, probably will. And you know, there's ways to avoid that. You know, I, I, credit unions. I don't know if banks still do this, but your local credit union still has Christmas clubs where you can, have, especially with automatic deposit, kind of makes it painless. Where you, eleven months out of the year, you slap twenty-five or fifty bucks into a, a, a deposit. And they add a little bit at the end of the year, and they give it back to you, and you've got your Christmas shopping money. Try that this year. I think I'm going to try that this year. I really do think I'm going to try that this year, just to see where I sit in, uh, in next year for Christmas. Maybe I'll do that, because I do have a, a, a credit union Christmas club. Let's see what happens with that. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, number 16, 62% of Americans buy their gifts in the week before Christmas. Guilty. Uh, no, I can't really say that. I've already gotten two gifts for my wife. She's really the only one I buy things for. You know, she buys everything for all the kids, throws it by me. Hey, what about this for this person? Yeah, sure. Okay. Because, you know, she, she does the finance thing around here. That's fine with me. Uh, 28.8% of the U.S. shoppers start their Christmas shopping in November. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good way. Some of you sickos out there start it in like August. I've had people like, hey, it's July. I got all my Christmas shopping done. Say, you should seek help. Seek help. There's a problem with you. Uh, <laughs> stats about Christmas show that 19% of Americans spend their money during the holiday season. Completely unplanned purchases, yes. And 51% of Christmas shoppers buy gifts for themselves, too. Guilty. Guilty. You are hearing. You are listening. You are listening to my Christmas present to myself right now. Because I bought that Roadcaster Pro completely impulse buy because they had it, you know, it's expensive, but they had it like four years interest free and the the tag was so small. I'm like, okay, I got a whole bunch of shows coming up. I'll be able to afford this. So I, I, I bought it for myself. So Merry Christmas to you. This is my Christmas present to you. A better way to hear my voice. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> for 60% of holiday shoppers, being able to return purchases is easily as important as buying them. 
Uh, it goes on and on and on and on. And I'm not going to go through the rest of them because then they start talking about returns, and that's depressing. I've worked retail for a couple of years. I will never work retail again. Those of you who work retail, you have my condolences this time of year. This time of year is rough on retail people. And just a little thing. I'm not going to get preachy on you, don't worry. Just a little thing. If, you, if you're going out to brick-and-mortar stores to to buy things for Christmas, be extra pleasant to the people who are trying to help you. Even if they're, they don't seem like they're on their A game and they may be a little grouchy appearing, most of the time this time of year, people who work in retail are having a pretty hard time because there's some unreasonable demands from unreasonable people being placed on them. Be a little mindful of those people, just a little. A little goes a long way. Smile at them. Uh, look at them, especially if you're coming up on them and they turn, you know, they're turning from a person who seems to be a little unreasonable and saying, can I help you? Smile at them and say, I hope you're having a good day. And just talk to them just a little bit and say, okay, this is what I need. Take a deep breath. Okay, now, because I've actually had to do that to waitress. They've looked at me and I'm like, uh, a waitress as, as just you could tell the table before me has just given them a hard time and I'm like okay first thing I want you to do is take a big deep breath because you just came off of a situation that I don't think I could have handled and they look at you and they, they smile and they know you're relating to them they take a deep breath it's like are you better now yes I'm better now okay now you can now we'll talk about what I need just be a little nicer this time of year to people it's all about being nice, and and people have a tendency to get grouchy and nasty. We are heading into the dark, dank days of winter. Get outside, even though it's cold. Get outside and take a walk, take a run in the snow. Um, be a, tr make a conscientious effort to get a little sunshine in your life, so you don't suffer through seasonal depression. That's that's never a good thing. But yeah, Christmas time. It's here. It's upon us. I hope if you do celebrate Christmas, I know every, not everybody does, but most people I know do, uh, be a little more mindful. It, it's not all about the gifts. We need, I, and, and, and like I said, at the risk of sounding preachy, I think we should get back more of a couple of gifts and more, hey, let's all meet over at my house and play Parcheesi or something. Am I dating myself, Parcheesi? Board games are fun at Christmas. You know, and then, like I said, the one guy on my on my feed said that he got a really cool chess set. That would be great. A chess set, a snack tray, books, things like that. I forget whose Christmas uh, tradition it is that everybody buys everybody else a book and they spend the rest of the day, you know, uh, drinking eggnog or, or hot tea and coffee and reading books all day. My daughter looked at me and she goes, I would totally go for that Christmas tradition. I said, yep, yeah, me too. <laughs> me too i would definitely do it we're wrapping it up stay tuned for juxtaposition if you're listening to this dropping on klrnradio.com where uh, liberty and reason still reign it's next it always is good and if i remember right i think they said something about the investigating the las vegas shooting so juxtaposition is going to be lit tonight stay tuned you definitely want to hit up Ordy and Rick on this one. It's it's such a great show. I really do love these guys. I would like to thank you for a, a year of listening to I Do This For Free. My numbers have been going up. I've had some interesting people on here. Uh, it's been a success. Not a smashing, huge, great, oh my gosh, success, but eh, to me, successful. I hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We will talk after Christmas. and I, I, don't even, I haven't even looked at my schedule yet. I'll try to get a New Year's one in. But nonetheless, enjoy it. Stay stress-free. Do things to make yourself happy, not stressed. And we'll talk soon. Chewy, take us out of here. I'm Alan Ray. I do this for free. Merry Christmas. <laughs>